and welcome back to my channel my name is vicky and normally i talk about all things fragrance body care beauty hauls things of that nature but this video is going to be a little different so this is probably more of a lifestyle slash professional kind of video so recently i have officially completed all four parts of the new york state cpa exam and i wanted to make a video to really give some tips and tricks that i have learned along the way so with that being said if you're interested in my tips and tricks for passing the cpa exam while working full-time keep on watching so my very first important tip when studying for the CPA exam while working full time is to know your work schedule. Um, when is your busy time? Do you have a busy time? Is it cyclical? Um, specifically, I work in uh, financial services and it's cyclical where I do a lot of work and quarter end times. So I know that time I'm going to be busy. So I have to plan accordingly. So if you know um, you want to take the exam, there's four exams, and you know you're going to be busy three months out of the year, then you should plan your studying time around that. You also have to really be intentional with making sacrifices. So um, I took three of the four tests over the past six months from... Um, I started studying for real March 2021 and I took um, BEC in June. I took both FIRE and AUDIT in August. I took AUDIT in July, but I failed that exam. I took it again in August, a couple weeks after FIRE, and I passed that one. Um, I took REG in 2020. So you can really do this within like eight to nine months. So I, like I said, you have to really be intentional with making a sacrifice. You know, you're going to have to give up some of your free time to study. So since I know my work schedule and when I'm going to be busy, that's how I was able to figure out, okay, which exams do I want to take and in which order? So I know during certain times I'll have more time to study because I won't be as busy at work. I'll be able to log off at a decent hour. So I have the rest of the evening to study, you know, for however long I decide to study for. Versus if you're like, if you have a busy time, and you know, you're going to be working late, it's a little more difficult to pencil in that study time. Um, I was studying during quarter end, so for Q2 quarter end during July of this year, 2021, there was virtually no sleep that was happening because I was making sure I was logging off by 7 p.m. And then I might take a nap, I might eat, but by like 9, 10 p.m., I had to be studying. Like that was something that I was holding myself accountable to. I have to study, I have to cover some more material and I would be up until one or two o'clock in the morning just studying, going over lectures, problems, things of that nature. So the next tip will be once you know your work schedule, register and schedule accordingly. So don't procrastinate on this. I, I did that. I was like, well, I'll I'll allow myself to register once I feel like I've covered enough material. That leaves the door wide open for you to procrastinate. So you once you know your schedule, you you apply, you register for the exams, get them scheduled ASAP. So that way you can map a schedule of how much material you need to cover and how much time you have. So if you have if you register for audit and you want to take it two months from now, whatever study material review course you're using, you know how much material you need to have covered over each week. That way you really 
need to make sure you're on top of studying and reviewing and all of that. Another important tip is to know your learning style. What works for you? So you'll watch these videos on YouTube and you'll see different methods that work for everyone. Everyone's lifestyle is different. So some people that are working full-time, they may have families to take care of. They may not have families to take care of. Um, I don't work in public accounting. Um, so most people that are working full-time and taking it do work in public accounting. It just so happens that my field still qualifies as experience. Um, you need to really figure out how you can study in your current environment. So whether if that's you need to type your notes in like OneNote or Word, um, you need actual books, um, notebooks, writing notes down, flashcards. Me personally, I at first I was typing them in OneNote, but I wasn't really retaining much by typing them. So I stopped typing them in OneNote. I would buy notebooks. I was writing down notes in notebooks, um, flashcards. So if you have review material and they use mnemonics for things, or if you create your own mnemonics for things, you use flashcards to write them down to further emphasize that, or for formulas or any things of that nature. So just one thing that helped me I like trap music. So sometimes, you know, I took the whole idea of a mnemonic and if I could make it kind of rhyme with a chorus I enjoy, that will help me. So don't judge me. But like, for example, I like Drake's song started from the bottom, right? And um, we'll take audit, for example, because it's the last exam I took. Um... One thing, one of the areas that you'll have to know is like some of the like the assertions. Completeness. Um, completeness starts from the bottom, right? So started from the do bottom, now I'm here, now I'm complete. That, it helped me. I'm not going to say it's going to help you, but stuff like that helped me. So if I'm randomly thinking of a song, that way, once I think of that chorus that I assimilated to a concept, I can you get your scratch paper when you're in the exam. You can write stuff down, like literally just do a data dump from your mind. And as you begin to remember things, just write it down. Then in there, once you get started and trust me, I was referring to some of those when I was taking my test. Another tip would be to take a one of the harder exams first because you have an 18 month window so you take one of the harder ones first the the pass rates aren't aren't that great so best of luck that you you know we all passed the first time i can speak from my own experience i failed both reg and audit so i did have to retake both of those so it it, it may happen hopefully it doesn't but it could happen so in order to prepare yourself for that, take one of the harder exams first, reg or fire. And then you can take one that would not be considered as hard. In my mind, they were all pretty hard, but like something where there's less material to cover. So if you take reg or fire first, and then next you pick between audit and BEC, and you could probably do either or for your third you can either take the next more difficult exam or you can take the other audit bec and then have all that extra time left for your hard one my order that i took them in was reg bec technically fire since i failed audit in between there and then audit um maybe i would recommend either reg or fire first probably if i had to do it again i may have tried fire first simply because it's it touches all of the other exams like not extensively per se but it's essentially the foundation for the rest of the exams so since i technically started studying for fire last because i had taken the other three exams before I took fire and I started to see things in here that I saw in other part in the other three exams 
so fire may help you get some foundation so to speak for the other three exams another thing that i will say really helped me was setting a good vibe for studying in general so i ended up finding out about lo-fi or lo-fi um hip-hop like chill hop you can i'll um leave i don't know either like the name in the in here or like i don't know how i'd link a playlist but maybe i'll insert like pictures of playlists i have apple music and title so you can or you can use youtube there should be like a lo-fi chill hip-hop study mix playlist on youtube that you can just play out there's also these videos that have like um time blocks for studying where it's a video of someone else studying but they have like music playing they have break times so it can be like two hours six hours and it won't be straight it'll be like 45 minutes to study 15 minutes for a break 50 minutes to study 10 minutes for a break so on and so forth so i'd recommend that as well something to really just set the vibe for you in the event you can't sit in dead silence you need a little something but nothing like too loud too nothing like too serious going on another tip i have is for your day before your exam i highly recommend that you not do too much so by that i mean trying to crack big topics that you're struggling with or trying to learn like some really heavy new material i don't recommend that because you're you're you, you're already gonna have the nerves for the test so there's that and you don't want to risk like losing some of the other things you've already learned so definitely you know do some review but like nothing too heavy as far as review material um i used becker so i got becker a little over three years ago i got it from through school they um i don't know like how many schools they visit but at my school they were offering a 50 percent discount and i had um purchased it then and somehow i got like grandfathered into their new thing where um your subscription doesn't expire after 18 months but either way i used becker you can use whatever it is that you want to use but i recommend that you definitely try to listen to some of the lectures one tip that i got in another video i don't remember because i must have watched 50 to 100 of these videos um they were watching lectures and there's an option to speed the lecture so it's normally like one so i would listen to my lectures on like 1.5 sometimes if they speak slow enough i put it on 1.75 just so that i'm not falling asleep during the lecture sometimes because if they're talking too slow you might go to sleep definitely work on multiple choice questions definitely definitely um your review course your material I recommend using the simulations like just to figure out the format that's what they helped me with not necessarily I didn't necessarily feel like the problems were looked anything like as far as what they were about but the format so how they look I recommend you at least use them for that and if your review um, course has videos where they explain the answers to you watch those like i started to do that instead of sitting trying to sit and figure out the simulations i would just if it's something i could figure out then i would do it i would just answer the questions myself but if it's like a long problem with formulas and things like that i would look at it i would read it but then i would just watch the video for the solution because chances are you'll get better information out of that as far as learning how to solve the problem you can take notes during that so that's another uh, thing that i picked up but um as far as multiple choice questions definitely do as many as you can so when you're reviewing your information your chapters 
do the multiple choice questions like um if you have an option where you can create random t um multiple choice questions like multiple choice tests i was doing them in batches of like first it was 10 then it was like 15 but i wouldn't do more than 20 um and i wouldn't i would do them like back to back so i know some people would do the same amount for how many would be in the test you can do that um i would just do like 15 to 20 but i would do those like three times in a row another tip i have is probably more personal but it's really to remember your why because when i failed reg that was the first one i took it took me a long time to like commit to trying again so you have to remember your why and use that as fuel to see the process through so i hope this video was helpful for you in your cpa exam journey feel free to leave me questions that you may have in the comments um in the event you want a follow-up video and best of luck to you in your own cpa exam journey thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next video